Right, guys, hello. Um, I'll start with the second slide uh, to introduce ourselves. My name is Halim. I'm a student at um, Natural Science. I'm studying mathematical computer modeling. And this is math, which I have been working with to do what we call visualizing the operation of a neural network. I use a singular over here, a neural network instead of net neural networks, because I'll be just one particular network to study about. So it probably is not the right way when we say we want to explain NNI and AI, but somehow we have to start somewhere. We could be wrong, but somehow we have to start. And my motivation started with, with uh, a statement where we say that AI is irresponsible. It is very good, it's very wise, it can come up with so many results, can give you advice, but it is irres irresponsible because of given and given some sort of answers it has these specific elements it cannot go beyond that it's finite what is missing is that it cannot say i'm sorry i do not know the answer it has the uh, the null element so if we want to relegate the responsibility back to human we have to be able to explain how it works so that if some problem happen human can take a responsibility by being taken to a court, not a computer. And during a presentation, during an experiment that I did before, uh, because I'm studying mathematics, I want to know more about the distribution of uh, prediction. I do not want to know the answer, I want to know the prediction. In this one, uh, we can see that it's quite very, very good, 100%. So I can say this is a, a good answer. But the second one is quite, quite high. But we can also see that there's another spike somewhere else. Uh, how can we uh, come up with something? How can we say that we want to understand something here that neural network come up with an answer which is wrong, but it give a wrong answer instead of saying that I do not know. And then I come up with, um, this is my bachelor project after several experiments. Then we decided that if we take out some um, input put into a neural network, can it come up with some answers as well? Sim same input, but has some elements uh, removed. I do not want to give you the answer, just some uh, ideas about what I did. And this is the last one that I did, where um, uh, I create a face recognition model, and then uh, I I have an input and then give some answers and I take that answer back and put into the system and then I got some output like this. This is what computer sees. From there, but we could not explain what happened. How does it come to that particular answer? And I said, okay, let's go to the basic. And then Mess said, all right, let's choose one neural network that we can study about. So we strip everything. So we create a very simple neural network and we implement that in JavaScript. So it is transparent and it is open for hacking. We have a, a link for that. We call that XML, X for explainable. Uh, it is an uh, artificial neural network. And what we did is that we visualized the calculation of a training as it progressed during iteration. So it is not like, uh, we got a model now, you can use it. We're not interested in having a model. We are interested to know what happened during a uh, training process. And what we did is that we have color and we have thickness to visualize the, the weights, the, the edges between neurons. And they are relative to, to the weights within one particular um, uh, layers. And this is not de uh, dependent to any other library, so it can be used quite easily. And now I pass to math. Uh, yes, so just a few slides more than we demo, that's I yeah. guess what we're doing. So this is the code and it's just the starting point of a little uh, prototype of uh, visualizing and then figure out how should we visualize and what potentials are there. And we're going to show it in a second, so jump to the next slides. Uh, it's interesting to uh, to kind of see what is there like the same patterns creating the same results but with different networks for example is one question that's coming up already that we are kind of wondering about. Go to the next one. And uh, also the next step that we haven't done yet is also to 
figure out how can you then start to play with the different weights and then manually change them and then see how the results differ and the, the depending on the outputs. And finally, in the pipeline is also converting it to some more object-oriented structure. So one consideration is, should it be fast and efficient and highly optimized, or should it be uh, kind of uh, more simple and then what way you can then play with the structures? And one thing we are going towards now is to actually create object-oriented structures to it, so you can kind of make different patterns and play around with that uh, more than the more traditional network, neural network structure. Yeah. yeah. Do the demo. Yeah, do the demo. Do I do the demo? Yeah. Okay. All right. Press play. So just to see the first kind of hello world of our little structure that we are doing here. So uh, there's a formula that is the basic sample input that is x times 2 minus 5 in this case. And then uh, it generates a lot of samples and then you can press train, I guess, is the first step to do. And then it will show the error. And the neural network will kind of change visually to it. And now it has then been trained and you can press predict. Wouldn't that be the next normal step to do here? Yes. And you have the inputs and the outputs. So you can see if the formula actually does what you are expecting it to do, if it's been trained to the formula. And a uh, very simple little setup, but everything is kind of in the code and everything is hackable for people who want to learn about how to use neural networks and also how to structure it. C can you show some of the code uh, Lim, as well? So you can go in and change the network, for example. Yep. Can you do that really quickly? Yep. Add another layer, another hidden layer. So it's just a simple structure to kind of start to play around with it and visualize it and understand it. And the basic principle is that everything is there. There's nothing that's hidden in a deep library somewhere. So everybody can go in and look at the code. At least for me, it's nice because I'm not that well trained in looking at the formulas Henning was showing you in his slide and said, everybody knows this, for example. But instead, you can uh, actually go in and see what is the actual code in this. Do you want to show some of the code and how you've done that? Uh, we have that. No, that's not important, but we have this code where it is not accessible. Where, um, for example, if you say, if you have a problem with mathematics for forward propagation and back propagation, I have implemented everything here uh, quite easily, uh, where you can just uh, hack if you want to change anything, or if you say that I might have ma made some errors, which we found last time, um, just I used the wrong way on how to to make what we call this a random binomial. So we solved that. Then there might be some more bugs, but just let us know. It is quite open. We're here, say, I think this is, um, I think this is, uh, back propagation. So the code is quite simple, very straightforward. I try to use as long name var variables name as possible, so it helps for you to understand what what it is not like d x y whatever you call it. So I put put a full name weights gradient, so you know what it is. That's it. And yeah. we have the link.